Hello and welcome yet again to Stories with Steve. The story show, yes, the story (laughs) show that America has not discovered yet, but will someday and fall in love. And um, here at Stories with Steve, we tell some stories, we take your mind off of the world and we just get present and have a good time. I have one of my favorite people in the world with me today. Yay. Juliet Jeffers, how are you? I'm good. I'm excellent. How are you? Oh, you look excellent. And that's good to know that you feel it and you look it. Um, Well, let me tell you something. This is what I did for you. I put makeup on. (laughs) I have it right here just in case I get a little, you know, glistening. Sure. A little glistening, glistening. Um, Now, how did we meet, you and I? Well, we met because I came in and auditioned for you for 15 minutes of them which was back in yep. and a um, long time ago yep. and and that was such a great experience because for me uh it was like the first time that I performed I performed 15 minutes of my show my one woman show but I didn't have the full show written and so it was just the first 15 minutes and the first experience of me actually performing it live in front of anyone and it was the best experience ever that was the funnest time. That was the funnest yeah. time. It was a fun, fun time for me too. I had just, uh, and, and so many people who come on here. So I had Laura Park the other day was on here. She was a femme. Mary Weiss was a femme. Christina Wong. So many of the- Amy great Ball. Femme, Amy Ball. All the great femme women have been coming, been coming on here. And that all started because I had gotten so tired of all of my great female friends going, will you produce my one woman show? Will you produce my one woman show? And I was yes. like- why don't I just produce everyone's one woman show? And that's what happens. Yes. Yeah, well, yes. But today we're here to tell some stories, have some good times, and be present, and be silly, and be fun. And uh, I flip a coin with you. Do you want to, ladies first, or you want me to go first? Ladies first. Ladies first. The floor is yours. Story away. So this is this story is about my year abroad in Spain. Well, I was I, I was in Spain, but I traveled all over Europe, and this is my junior year abroad. And um, and I don't really talk about well, I haven't talked about it in a long time, and I just thought you know this might be fun to tell. Um, so basically, I knew that I wanted to study abroad, but I didn't know which country. I was like, do I do France? Do I do, want to do Spain? Do I do England? I knew I didn't want to do England because I wanted to go someplace to learn a different language, right? And I have always had this obsession with the Spanish culture and the language. I have Dominican relatives. And when I was nine years old, I went to Santo Domingo for the first time and met that, you know, the Tio Pablo character is based on my Dominican uncle. And so met my family there and I just fell in love. And I was also determined to learn and become fluent in Spanish. And so I thought this was a perfect opportunity, went to Spain. And, uh, and so I arrived and we, the first city that we went to, I was supposed to study in Madrid, but we did like a, <clears throat> a little tour of the country and we had to, we were tested on it. So we learned about the culture and the history and you know, art and all of that stuff. And, um, and so the first city we went to was Toledo, Toledo for Americans. Um, so Toledo and you know, and everything was just so beautiful and just, you know, the, the, the architecture, the history, all that stuff was just lovely. And I remember I'm hanging out. And first of all, I, I just have to start by saying that there were about 20 of us in the group and I was the only black girl. And so I go and we're in Toledo and we we're walking around and these ladies, Spanish woman, um, she was like, oh, you know, can we take a picture of you guys? And so we were like, okay, yeah. And so me and my girlfriends were just closed and we're like this. And they're like, no, 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 you. And they point out to me, like they wanted to take a picture of me alone because this was a while back. And so back then when I was in Madrid and actually throughout all of, of Spain, the only black people that you saw there were people that were like, from Africa. And so they weren't used to black Americans. And so it was like, I I felt like that's really interesting. And so I just sort of took it in. I was just like, no, I want my friends in the shop too, you know? And so that was just a little taste of like my whole experience there. um, The whole year that I was there because 
every time I went out, if I was in the, the metro, I would get stares. Like people were staring at me. And it wasn't like a, I didn't feel like it was racist. It wasn't racist at all. But it was just this fascination that like they've never seen, you know, me, like someone like me before, right? And so um, I remember I would be, I, I got really fed up with it at one point and I was on the metro and I'm sitting there minding my own business. And this, this woman was looking at me and all of a sudden I just went, and I just stared at her back, you know what I mean? And she was like, oh, oh, like she didn't know what to do with herself, right? And, um, and so, I, so that was kind of like my experience all through Spain. And we had a lot of vacations, right? Um, a lot of holidays. So I was fortunate to have the opportunity just to travel. So I went to Portugal, I went to Italy, I went to uh, Morocco, I went to France and England. And so, I mean, there's so much. I mean, I, I feel like I should give a little bit of like highlights for each place that I went to. And so uh, Portugal, I went to, that was, for me, it was all about shopping. I went there twice, actually. The first time I went, it was really cool, went with my friends. And then the second time, my mother actually came to visit me for Christmas and my brother bought her the ticket as a Christmas present to come visit, which was so sweet. And so that, you know, I was traveling around in hostels with my friends. So I said to my mom, I said, oh yeah, I went to Portugal already, we went to Lisbon and you know, there's this great place that we stayed. Do you want to stay there too? And she's like, okay. And we stayed at this hostel that had no heat, like no heat, no heat, no hot water. And so we're like, we're sleeping in these like double beds, right? So she had uh, uh, two twin beds. She had one, I had the other. And she says to me, you know, in the middle of the night, she looks over at me, I'm just all comfortable. And she's like, why is she all comfortable? Because I'm freezing, what's going on? And then so she hopped in my bed <laughs> and she realized that I had like three blankets on. <laughs> so she was like, what the hell? You're like hoarding the blankets, what's going on? So we slept, my mom and I in like little twin bed, you know, in this little hostel, which was really cool. Um, little bit about Morocco. Okay, so I went to Morocco twice as well. I went in the first semester and I loved it so much that I was like, I want to go again and I want to see more, like more cities, right? And so I was in Marrakesh and this little market, um, have you ever been to Mar Marrakesh by the way? Nope. Morocco, okay. So they have the, all these little quaint markets and like these like um, snake charmers and people playing with fire. It just was like really, really fascinating. And they were known for like, you can get really good leather there and like cheap and da da da. So I was like, I want to buy a leather coat. I buy a leather coat. And for some reason, you know, this was back in the day when they would do um, COD, collect on delivery, sure. right? Sure. And so something happened with my credit card where it didn't, it wasn't going through. So they were like, well, you can pay part of it you know, and then we'll deliver it to you. And then, you know, we'll go pay the rest when we deliver it, right? So I was like, okay, great. That sounds great to me. So I do that. This is on the first trip that I go to Morocco. And, and so I lived with a Spanish family in Madrid. And we had this little, they, the family had a maid and her name was Baca and she talked really fast, you know? And so every day I would come to school and be like, did my package go? No, no hay nada, nada. Today, my package said, no, no, no. Finally, I was like, oh shit. They were never going to send that package. So they got my deposit, right? Whatever money that was, I don't know what that was. And they never sent the package. So guess what? The next session, right? The next semester, I was like, I want to go back to Morocco. I went back to Morocco and found the same little store in the crazy market area and i happened to um i met this moroccan guy who didn't look moroccan like he looked sort of like european and um and so they in the in the markets they speak berber when they don't want people to understand you know because i spoke a little bit of french so i could understand you know and so i walk into the store with this guy and I go in, I go, yes, 
I don't know if you remember me because it literally was the same guy there, right? So I was like, I don't know if you remember me, but I bought a jacket a couple of months ago and I never got it. And then they start speaking bourbon to each other, whatever, right? And so the guy that I was with, you know, translating was like, oh yeah, they were trying to get over on you. And so they, of course, they had to give me the jacket, you know, but they never, I mean, what are the odds that a black girl from the Bronx would be in Morocco in the first place? And then secondly, that go back two months later, you know? So I just felt really good. And guess what? That jacket, I finally gave that jacket away, but I've had it for all these years, which is really crazy. There's so many more stories, but I, I'll stop. <laughs> no, I'm so glad you told it. Now, I have a couple questions, though, to go with this, and I'm glad we're yes. going here because this this is technically, this is going to be the week of, of travel stories because Laura Park and I just did an episode together, and we told travel stories, so this is perfect. So Excellent. you had to do this during college. Yes. Amazing. And that was through the school. Through the school. So it was through Syracuse University, and they had a program where they had, you know, they had programs in, in Paris, in Florence, in Madrid, and in London. So I chose Madrid because, like I said, I just had this obsession. I was always too scared. I, as a kid, I, when I was younger, I was scared. I was scared of a lot of things until I hit about 22, 23, 24, and I got a little braver. But ah. I had friends who were doing these overseas, you know, semesters overseas. And I had friends who did an entire year, like 10 months of school traveling around. And looking back, I wish I had done it. Because yes. I, didn't, I didn't really travel. I took the very first travel I ever did out of the country was to Mexico when I was 25 or 26. I took my best friend on a trip. I paid for it as his, as his uh, wedding gift. Uh -huh. was and... Um, and we went to Cancun and I handled, I mean, it, it was like 1994, 95. So I'm talking like, I spent like a whopping total, like $700 that included the flights and where we stayed. Right. But, but, but I'll tell you now, my, I spent 15 days in Italy. Now I was going to tell another story. Fuck the other story. I'm going to tell you this story. Okay. I spent 15 days in Italy. Now, originally my old friend, Danny, who you were, I think you remember Danny. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, Castillo, Castillo, yeah, something like that. Yeah, Cas Casillas. I'm sorry, Casillas. Danny, watching that. I just like yes. that. He's short. Okay. <laughs> so for his 40th birthday, he wanted to take a whole group to Italy, and I'm like, I mean, he was going to do this giant trip to Italy, Italy, Italy. So great. Wow. So, like 15 of us are in. Then a week later, 11 of us are in. Then a week later, nine of us, are, three of us went. Okay, three wow. of us went. Um, <laughs> the flight there. Okay, so they they he and his other friend oscar decided to fly business class but i didn't want to spend the money the business class fare was almost three thousand dollars and i had found a flight for like i'm not making this up nine ten round trip it was coach but it was two seats and i was on the aisle and i thought you know what i can do i can do lax to london london mm -hmm. to to Rome. break it up yes i can break it up i can make this work so we take off, and this is the first fun part of the story. We take off out of LAX. I'm sitting next to this another young guy. He's going to meet his family who are going to bike through, through Italy, which I think is amazing. Everyone's meeting there. We're in the air, I think, no lie, 30 minutes when we hear that announcement that you don't want to hear on a plane. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, is there a doctor on board? Oh, God. Okay. So uh, then you see uh, stewards and stewardesses going down the aisle with oxygen tanks. They go through all the oxygen. Then we uh -huh. find out about 25 minutes later, we're going to be making an emergency landing in Chicago because oh the man God. in the front believed he, a man several rows up, believed he was having a heart attack. Uh -huh. He was really having a panic attack. His wife knew he had panic attacks. And we're all sitting there going, why would you sign up for an LAX to London if you have panic attacks? Exactly. Up, right? Those LAX to Dallas to New York, take a night, then go to London. Like, break it up. So we land in Chicago. Or, or take it out of van. Or you knock them out. So right. we, we, we land in Chicago. Now, here's a little known fact. If you're an international flight that gets emergency landing status, you're grounded for four hours because they take all of your luggage out from underneath. Thank God oh. I put my luggage overhead. They yes. scan everything again. Then they bring dogs on the plane. I'm not making this up. They take everything out, make the dog sniff it. They sniff you. You have to sit there really still. And there's this giant dog. And I love dogs, but scary dogs. So we wound up, we wound up finally taking off. We land in London. I've completely missed my connection. Uh, um, 
I have to figure out what I'm going to do. Am I staying the night in London? I didn't bring a cell phone with me because I'm like, I don't need a cell phone. This is, this is 2007. I had a digital camera, right? So I'm just going right. to, you know, this is before this, right? Okay. So, yes. um, <laughs> They're, they're, they're negotiating people for hotels. I'm like, oh, uh-uh. I walk right over to Air Italia, the little, the desk, and there's a nice woman. Yes. And there's no one in the airport because it is literally, I don't know, it must have been like 11 o'clock at night. And mm -hmm. I like, I lower my baseball cap <laughs> and I lean in and I just go, hey, um, so in the straightest voice I can do my fiance is going to kill me. And I explain what happened, like in the uh -huh. deepest, straightest voice I can do. And then she's <laughs> like, she's like, kind of she's like, <laughs> and she finds me and she gives me a new ticket. And I go, Oh, thank you so much. I go now, where is this? Where do I have to go? And she's like, gate, uh, like, I'm not making this up like gate 86. I go, where am I now? And she's like, gate nine. And I'm like, oh God. oh God, how much do I, how much? She goes, you have, and she wasn't kidding, like six minutes. She called ahead. I am running. I am running through an airport. There's no one yes. in this area because it's like a weird in-between time. I come sliding in. <laughs> they take me. They're like, they're like, the two ladies run me down the, 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 the little, you know, the little tunnel. I get yeah. on the plane and they're like, Mr. Silverman. I'm like, yes. And I walk on and everyone starts clapping for me. It's only like half full. <laughs> <laughs> I land in Rome. It's now like, I, 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 I'm, I, I'm going to get all my time drunk, but it's probably like one or two o'clock in the morning. Mm. I get a cab. Then I'm getting nervous because I'm like, I don't know where I am. He drops me off and I'm at this little boutique hotel in Rome. And I'm like, it's completely dark. Mm. And I'm like, uh, so I'm ringing the bell. Like, eek, eek, eek. <laughs> and I'm like, no one's on the street. I'm like, Oh my God. And it's starting like having that moment of like, well, where am I going to sleep if I can't? So all of a sudden I see a light come on and this little old man in his bathroom comes out and opens the door and he's like, oh. and he's like, Mr. Silverman. And I go, yeah. And he's like, come on in, checks me. And he's like, your friends are on the, of course, third floor. So oh, I have to walk all the way up all right, and knock right. on the door. Oscar opens the door like half asleep. And Danny pushes past him, grabs me. He, they thought I like, they were checking the news that the flight went down or something. Oh God, yeah. But I then spent a glorious, glorious 15 days in Rome, Florence. I got to go to Sorrento. I got to go to, we went up to Venice. There was a train strike, which limited our ability to travel past five o'clock. So you could only travel between eight and five for business, it was for business people mostly, but it really um, messed, you, messed up our trip because we were planning to go up to Venice and grab a train back at, you know, 10 o'clock, 11 yeah. o'clock, whatever. Right, so we could right. really think things out. But I had like several magical days and the most, two most magical days were the days that Oscar and Danny wanted to go do something and I opted to just do my own thing. Your own thing, yes. Isn't and that I the best? It's the best. And like, yes. They went to see, they went to Pisa, which was, I believe about a, I, I'm sorry if I get this wrong. I think it's about a two hour drive on a bus outside of Florence. And they said, uh -huh. do you want to come with? And I thought to myself, do I want to see Pisa? Yes, I want to see Pisa. Do I want to spend the whole day by myself doing what I want to do? And the key thing was, as I was with two people, I like these guys very much. They, they had no interest in museums. And I'm like, I need to see the David. I need to see. Of course. I need to see. Uh, uh, oh my God! Uh, that giant painting uh, of her coming out of the shell. The, it's, the, the, the the, um, uh, it's the painting of Venus. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Which is coming out. I I needed to see these. So I was doing all these things on my own. But two of the greatest moments for me were both in Florence. One was I sat in an outdoor cafe next to this giant and there's a word like i don't know where it's not is it piazza it's a giant open is that piazza. Right? Uh -huh, piazza. and then there was a giant um church uh -huh. and it was just watching the church was it yes church. <laughs> church. <laughs> i know we kept saying just do this um so we kept watching like i just kept watching the birds land and the formations and then take off and the people coming going but one of the greatest moments for me was florence it was about 
three o'clock in the afternoon. I'm walking back to the hotel. I'm so ready for my uh, Italian nap. I'm going to do yes. the greatest siesta. siesta. So I'm going there and I'm, uh, I'm coming down this really narrow, co- I decided to take different routes. I'm like, I have a map on me, you know, um, and I find this little winery and I walk past it and I look back and it's really dark and I'm just like, I'm going in here. So I yeah. go in, it's really dark. I just sit at the bar, the guy comes over and just pours me the wine, like in a tall, and I'm just like, and I'm drinking, I'm just enjoying myself. And then he hands me another one and I'm not done. I'm like, oh, oh, okay. So I finished that one and I start this one. And then he leans over and he's like, (laughs) in perfect English, the ladies would like to buy you a third drink. (laughs) And I go, the, who? And I look over and there are, Four gorgeous Spanish Spaniards, women yes. at the end of the bar, and they all wave to me, and I wave back. <laughs> and then I feel terrible because I'm like, oh man, I'm taking free drinks, and oh boy. So right. I got up and I walked over, and I just walked over and I smiled and I said, uh, and it was the funniest moment because I just walked over and I go, I go, thank you for my drinks. I'm like you're welcome, you're welcome. I said, um. I, I got to tell you. And then they all start laughing and the one girl puts her hand on my shoulder and she goes, we know you're gay. We just were being nice <laughs> because you were alone. And I just started laughing because I'm like, that's so nice. Like, that was, like, thank you. Thank you for knowing that. And thank you for right. supporting my alcoholism alone. <laughs> but the most magical thing happened to me and I will wrap this story up. Um, on the trip back, because I had because of the landing in, in London being late and me not getting on that one, I was the, the transfer connection flight I was supposed to get. I remember I went and got on the other one? Yes. Because I didn't call the airlines, tip to all of you travelers out there, if you don't get on the first part of your trip and take another, they cancel your return. You have to call them and say, hey, this happened. Right. I still need, but I didn't know that. This had never happened to me before. So when I went to the airport and I got to Air Italia to get back to London, actually I was going uh, Rome to Newark, Newark back to LA. When I was going to Newark, they said, You're, you can't, you were canceled. You didn't show up for your, and I was like, uh, uh. And then again, it was like a do over what had previously happened because she was just like, ah, uh, there's, there's no flight. There's nothing, there's nothing. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> My fiance is gonna kill me. <laughs> like literally and then I, th- I make up a bullshit story about my fiance in Hoboken New Jersey like right, right. Kill me. like because I travel I travel for business and <laughs> our uh our engagement party is tomorrow night she is going you, is there anything you can do and then the woman was like this well all right and she put me on a flight and I got home but, wow I'm gonna use that line Try that. It's nice. Just don't tell your real husband and or fiance that you're, you know, using them as your leverage. So exactly. on my flight back, I kept a journal and I had this mm. tiny little journal and I wrote from Rome to Newark and I literally finished just as we were getting that in 20 minutes, we're going to be descending. And I shut it and I had written for, I mean, we're talking, you know, nine, 10 hours. And the woman next to me looked over at me when I fin- like closed my thing. And she said, yeah. she goes, what did you just write? And I laughed and she said, you finished your journal. Oh my God, what did you just write? Uh-huh. And I said, um, I'll be a hundred percent honest. I wrote every single thing that I had been holding in about myself, every mm-hmm. single thing that I had been upset with myself, everything about my ex, and at the bottom of every page I wrote, and I drop you into the ocean below. Wow. And I'm talking like, I could go get it, like 50 pages. A full book. Yeah, yeah. So I land in LA, LAX, and not a week later, my old friend Zachary says, you need to try this gay website. It's called Connection with two X's. I'm like, yeah, I know what it's about, dude. And he's like, no, 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 it's not a hookup. It's a dating thing. And he goes, do what I do get on there. I go, I'm over the websites. I don't do websites anymore. They're a waste of time. He goes, get on there, log in, don't do anything. And at the end of the day, come home, you'll have all these emails. So I'm like, 
all right, I'll try it. So I went in and you know, it's a crazy website when you're just putting your information in and your photo hasn't been approved yet. And you're like, you're that bubble with a question mark. You know what I mean? You're that right. same wet. And yes. people are already hitting you up. Like, Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> hey, what's going on? Hey, what are you? And my favorite sup S U P question mark. All right. But less than a week later, my husband of now Jim emailed me on there and said, hey, Steve, and my name wasn't on there, and said, I don't know if you remember me, but we met 10 years ago, and we never went on a date. We were supposed to go, we never went. How are you? And uh, that was 2007, and 13 years later, and all going on seven years Whoa! later. Like, I never knew that's how you, I have children now. I never knew that's how you guys met. But I, I love that story. I honestly don't believe, because we've or, talked or re-met. Re-met. We, we both weren't ready 10 years prior, but I yes. honestly believe me writing all that stuff, me taking those moments by myself, for myself, in a whole other world, allowed me to open the door, open that path. Yes. To something new. Wow. I love that. I love that. That's have beautiful. To, have, what is your favorite place you've ever been to? Um, ooh, wow to pick one because I've traveled a lot like I when I was a kid we went on a vacation every year and so I have you know I've been to like a lot of different islands in the Caribbean um Morocco was pretty special Paris love 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 Paris yeah. I would say oh this is hard um <laughs> Like if I have to pick one. Well, I, I look, just say, it, it, there's pressure because I asked this, of, I couldn't pick one the other day. I asked this exact same question of Laura and we both kind of banded, you know, batted a bunch of things around. Jim and I, um, when we got married, we, yes. we, we had our home, we had our condo in Palm Springs at the time. We didn't need like, buy us a toaster, buy us a waffle maker. You know, we didn't go on any website. So we said to everybody that we were going to go on a trip to Paris. And if you wanted to help us get to Paris, my sister had this really cool thing in her house. She brought it with her. It's about a three foot Eiffel Tower. It's made out of like twisted like cord. It's really cool. Yeah. So everybody, uh -huh. everybody came to the wedding and just put envelopes in the tower, like build the tower. It was kind of cute. Uh -huh. So Jim and I got all set to go to Paris. And, um, you know, we're living in Palm Springs at the time. It was a billion degrees and the summer was coming. And I'm like, I can't handle another summer here. It's going to be 120 degrees out. And yeah. uh, uh, not unlike today. And uh, I said to Jim, because we had visited our aunt in Santa Barbara several times, I said, you know, I was looking at Santa Barbara and um, I said to him, if you want to let Paris go, instead of going seven or 10 days to Paris, we can go live a month for the same amount of money in Santa Barbara. Yes. And we moved to Santa Barbara for a month went back to Palm Springs, did it again the next year, and now we live here full time. And now you live there, yeah. Well, I remember I came to your housewarming oh, in Santa Barbara. Yeah. Yes. So I would, like I, so my, it's Morocco, and I'll tell you why. Yeah. Because um, prior to going there, I was like, I had never been to Africa. As a matter of fact, that's the only African country that I've ever been to since. Um, and so for me, when I went there, it was, it was about, oh my God, I am on the motherland right now. Like I'm here. And, and it was just so, it was very magical. Everything felt like I, it was a dream. Yeah. And that's, and that's, you know, as opposed to like Rome did that for me too, where I just felt like, wow, like yeah. everything was just a wow. But, but Morocco specifically, because it was just so different from, you know, America, so different from Europe, you know? And it was just so, it's just this feeling that I had. It was just so magical. I was like, my people! Yeah. Even though they're, you know, they, they weren't like um, the, uh, they were Arabic, you know, majority, right? But still, it, there, was, there was this feeling that I had. That was like, every, oh. every single person in the world I always tell them is like, your perspective, not just on the world, but on yourself changes when you go to a foreign country. And it's scary for a lot of people. Yeah. It was scary for me. 
look, mm -hmm. it was terrifying for me when I like land in Rome and it's like one o'clock in the morning and I'm like, I have no phone. I, but, but I'll be fine. I'll think, you know, I'll figure it out. And I hope, and yeah, I hope that once all this clears up, that the world becomes a more unified and traveled place. I agree. I agree. Because I, you know, because of the fact that I love to travel, I want to be able to continue to travel. There's so many places I haven't been to that I want to go to, you know, and, um, and I feel like I learned so much as a kid. I mean, I was so fortunate to be able to travel as a kid. And, yes. and when I was uh, going through Europe, I was 21 years old. And when I think about it, though, when I think about all the things that I did in that year, if my parents knew like in terms of like the danger, like I was in dangerous situations, you know what I mean? Yes. But yet it made me stronger. It made me grow up. Yeah. It made yeah. me know more about myself. So oh, yeah. I, yeah. Very and good. my number one tip, and you give your number one tip and then we'll wrap up. My number one tip for travel, for anyone out there who wants to travel, and it's something I have done, and I don't know where I heard this, but I've done it forever, is we will hail a taxi for dinner and we'll get in and they'll ask, where, where do you want to go? Yes. And I will say, we did this in Rome. Where do you go for dinner? What's your favorite restaurant? Never mind where yes. the tourists want to go. In Rome, this man said, he took us up into the hills. He gave us his card. He went in. He was like, it was a cousin of his. No one spoke English. Um, I speak very little Spanish, but I had two Spanish-speaking people with me with you yeah he treated us like kings and then toward the end of the night all i had to do was give his card back they called him and he came and got us and brought us back to the hotel I was like how did you enjoy it it was the best time yes it's like it's where that's my thing is like you know there's all the tourist traps and all the things you're supposed to do and see go off the beaten path go off the beaten path and listen to somebody who lives there and knows it and he was wonderful because he's like what kind of food do you like what are you looking for? What kind of, you know, do you want more to be more drink? Do you want it to be more scenic? Do you want, and we said, we want the best food. He's like, let's go. Nice. What's your, what's your biggest, what's your number one tip? Um, be open, be open. Because when I traveled in Europe specifically, people always say that Americans come to Europe and they're just like, I want it my way. I want, they're expecting America in a different place. Yes. Right? And so yes. it's like, be open to the change, be open to, you know, that old saying, which still stands is when in Rome, you know what I mean? So, so just like you said, I mean, do what the locals do, be open to new and, and exploring, you know? So that's, that's my tip. Thank you so much for spending story time with me, Julia. Where can people find you online? Thank you for inviting me. Um, Where do you want to I am all over the place at Julia Jeffers, J-U-L-I-E-T-T-E, -T -T -E, Jeffers, J-E-F-F-E-R-S. And I know things are going to come rebounding back and lots of more acting gigs. You are the most, one of the most prolific people who keeps going in so many ways. And I know just like you, because you and I, I know we share this and I'm going to say it and I won't edit this out. You and I share, I think the same thing of like, I'm not doing enough. Why aren't things working out for me in the way back of our heads? But right, right. the amount of stuff you do and I see you doing for yourself, for others from, you're doing meditations for uh, on Zoom on here. You're doing your classes, your solo workshops. You're putting up other women's shows. You're booking gigs left and right. And my absolute favorite is you're showing your old school stuff, like your Martin oh. stuff and your 21 Jump Streets and things from years ago <laughs> that are just fantastic. So um, whatever, you. I'll make a pledge to you and you can make a pledge to me. Let's just keep that little voice in our heads that says, we don't do enough, we're doing plenty. We're, we're being doing plenty. right where we are. It's great to see you. Thanks, everybody. Thank for stories with Steve. We'll have another one coming at you real soon. If you want to come tell a story with me, visit me. Send me an email, steve at prettytheseries.com, which Juliet was in. And yes, by the way, right? By the way. <laughs> That's and a whole other I'll see story. you soon. Bye. Bye.